Welcome back everyone. This is the State of the Nation. Now last week on Sunday, we asked a question on this program. Where is China amidst all this crisis? On the very next day, on Monday, the Chinese ambassador in Sri Lanka, Ki Zhenghong, held a media briefing and announced to the country what China has been doing to help Sri Lanka. Chinese amb ambassador to Sri Lanka uh, has told the media, this uh, was told on Monday, he said, and I quote, this is in addition to the $2.8 billion assistance that China has extended to Sri Lanka since the outbreak of the pandemic. So the question that I have is why are we resorting to action that has failed us immensely and not looking in, a, in the way of our real friends, India and China, and trying to get them to help us to sort things out? We have a case to make here. China is one of the richest, if not the richest country globally, slowly dominating every aspect of world affairs. As we all know, the United States cannot stand this. And they will do everything to undermine Chinese influence on anything. Even if the wind blows towards China, they will find a way to scream, traitor. Now, if we can have $10 billion, right? We would be quite comfortable to pass this year. It's a matter of $10 billion. China is having $3,400 billion in their foreign currency reserves. Now, Sri Lanka is having little more than uh, one billion. Uh, yes. Right. Yeah. So, uh, with swap and all that, we may claim that we have little more than two billion, but in reality, even less than one billion dollars. But China is in possession of three thousand four hundred billion dollars as their foreign currency reserve. Now, earlier on, I said our current economic woes are mainly due to our imbalanced trade deficit propelled by an issue in the supply chain, meaning uh, we bring everything from all around the world rather than finding ways and means of producing it here. Now, our main importing partners are China, where we spend over $4 billion a year, India just over $3 billion, and UAE and Singapore respectively. Instead of going to an institution that has failed us 16 times and will absolutely give us the wrong prescription this time around as well, guaranteed, why not talk to these countries and ask them to help us? Because we've provided in trillions of dollars in the past two decades to these countries by our importing products from them. And in return, when we are in distress, let's go and ask, come help us. You know the surprising fact in all this? China will definitely respond favorably. In fact, they have already responded favorably because they understand that if Sri Lanka is healthy economically, they can continue to do business in the future as well. But China will not forcefully come to help us. Our leadership needs to go make the case, go make the appeal to China. It is really the time for our president to make good with our big brother and make a state visit to China as soon as possible, in my opinion. You know it's the right thing to do when the liberal thinking economists reject it flat out without no good reason whatsoever. So one of those solutions, it seems, is asking China for a little bit of financial help in restructuring some of those debts. Uh, as always in this situation, though, we might wonder what China wants in return. So I think Sri Lanka had hope in China in two ways. Uh, China has built a very impressive port city in Sri Lanka. Uh, and in 2020 and 2021, Sri Lanka authorized sweeping concessions uh, on taxations, on regulations uh, that hugely incentivized or gave uh, better terms of treatment to investors in the port city. There was an expectation then that investment would flow in and Sri Lanka's debt repayment problems would be solved because the reserves would be built up by investment to the port city. Now, that did not materialize. Uh, and today, Sri Lanka is seeking uh, a more limited assistance of restructuring the other bilateral debt they have with China. Uh, for more on this, I'm now joined by Professor Samitha Hetige uh, from the National Education Commission here in Sri Lanka. Professor, thank you very much uh, for joining me. Good to see you. Now, for some reason, everybody has amnesia, Professor. And everyone is resorting to a solution that has failed immensely in this country. To get out of this crisis, shouldn't the government focus on bilateral relations, especially with countries like uh, China? Yes, Mahesh, because uh, China is a very old friend. We have had relations for over 2,500 years. 
and uh, since the People's Republic of China was established in 1949, they have given us more than 100 development projects that has uh, given employment to more than hundreds of thousands of Sri Lankans. And uh, at the moment, very specially, the Belt and Road Initiative is uh, operational with 140 partners, that is 140 countries and other organizations and the People's Republic is uh, investing so much on it and trading with those partners at a very high scale. And even during the COVID pandemic, the BRI partners have benefited by being uh, members of the BRI. So, uh, I think China has uh, always helped us, always worked with all elected governments in a very friendly manner. And uh, during the conflict, they supported us to end violent conflict and unconditionally protected us in all international forums. So, China-Sri Lanka bilateral relations can be very much strengthened by becoming a partner of the BRI and China's dual circulation economics because they have worked so hard and uh, made a surplus in China. So, now they are investing in other parts of the world, that is trade expansion and uh, we have a great opportunity by becoming a mem member of the BRI. We are already a member, by becoming an active member, we can benefit so much. Indeed. Uh, now, Professor, we know that if there is a genuine request from our leadership uh, here uh, in, in Sri Lanka to China requesting for funding at least around, let's just say, $10 billion, there is a high possibility that China would respond favorably. But uh, of course, there would be terms and conditions. But going to the IMF would also be the same. Those conditions might not be favorable to Sri Lanka. And IMF wouldn't give us that exact amount we require. I think the best we can get is around 1.5 billion. What do you think about this idea of China bailing us out? Uh, indeed, Mahesh, uh, now uh, if we look at uh, starting from the COVID pandemic, since the pandemic started, China had given us so far $2.8 billion worth facilities, $2.1 billion of FDIs, that is the largest ever FDIs we have ever got and uh, then uh, the CICT, Colombo International Container Terminal, they surpassed 3.1 million TEU mark. The Hambantar International Port marked uh, 2.3 million uh, tons uh, achieved that uh, status and the Hambantar Industrial Park is expected to get uh, 300 million dollars for a tyre factory which will provide 3,000 employment opportunities to Sri Lankans and also during the pandemic uh, 11,000 Sri Lankans retained their employment working with the Chinese projects and uh, most important factor is that for us to stand up on our feet after the pandemic, facing the pandemic, China provided 26 million doses of the vaccine out of which 3 million was a gift and the balance came to us in a very reasonable uh, price. So, and also the Hambantar Industrial Park also attracted an electronics company which is uh, investing about $58 million, providing about 1,000 uh, job opportunities for Sri Lankans. And uh, the, the Maldivian Yacht Enterprise, which is the largest ever Maldivian investment coming to Sri Lanka, is about 58 million dollars which will provide 700 uh, job, job opp opportunities for Sri Lankans. So these things we have to keep in mind to work with China and uh, of course as you said uh, we have to be professional, we have to be, uh, we have to have consistent economic policies and we have to show the world that we are providing quality services and products. Then only China will, not only China, anybody will come. But uh, since China is a very sincere, good friend, we can show the world that we are working with the world's second largest trading partner in a very high standard manner, way, so that the rest of the world will be attracted to us. Indeed, uh, makes perfect sense. Well, we had to leave it at that, uh, Professor Samitha Bhattige from the National Education Commission. Thank you very much.